Okay, so obviously the first step is you're going to digitize your line art. And I usually scan my line art in at around 600 DPI, but some people like to scan as high as 1200 DPI. Um, it all depends on the system you've got set up. Some, if, if, if you're dealing with an older computer, you might want to go a little lower, but if you've got the, the horsepower, go ahead and scan it even higher if, you can, uh, if your machine can handle it. Why the heck not? Because then you can repurpose the art in more ways. Okay, now that your line art is scanned, it's time to make the art pure white and pure black. And for that, for this part, I use levels. And the way you get there is you go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, or just Command-L or Control-L, depending on what system you're using. Now, uh, the, the dialog pops up here. Uh, you see these little sliders you can move back and forth to increase the blacks and increase the whites. I usually just plug in the three little fields underneath uh, these numbers here, 129, and then tab over to the last one and tab, uh, type in 131. That tends to be, that works pretty well for me 90% uh, of the time, but every once in a while I have to adjust the sliders just to uh, increase the, the quality because the more white you add, the less your finer lines are going to show up, obviously. Now that the artwork is pure black and pure white, it's time to do some cleanup. As I've said on many art and stories before, I don't actually clean up very much on the page. I do most of it in Photoshop. And uh, for that, I'll zoom in and out, uh, look at the artwork up close, and I use the pencil tool rather than the paintbrush tool for this. Why? Because we're dealing with pure black and white pixels, and uh, the paintbrush does that. It, it doesn't rasterize the pixels. It doesn't alias the pixels around it. It'll just give you either a black or a white pixel when you're painting on. So I'll go in and I'll clean up my blacks, add a little bit here and there. And then I'll go in and I'll touch up the line art. Anything that didn't come out as crisp as I wanted it to after I ran levels on it, I'll touch up with the, uh, the pencil tool in Photoshop. And I don't worry too much about how jagged those lines look as I paint them because uh, when you zoom out, it looks just fine. Uh, you'll have to do a little bit of zooming in and zooming out to see for yourself, uh, to, to test it out, to get a good feel for it. But that's the technique I use for that. Okay, next we want to actually make this background layer into an editable layer. And for that, we go into our layers palette and we control or yeah, control click or right click on the background layer and select layer from background. And that's going to make this into a layer. You'll see this dialog box pop up in the middle of your screen. And what I usually name this new layer is flats. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, we're going to go back to our layers palette. And we're going to control click once again on this layer and select duplicate layer. Again, a dialog box pops up in the middle of your screen. Don't be alarmed. We're just going to name this new layer. And what we're going to change this, we're going to change this layer name from flats copy to line art. This is going to be our line art layer, obviously. Here comes a neat part. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the whites from our line art layer. And for that, we're going to go back to the layers palette and click the channels tab. And we're going to scoot down to the bottom of the channels tab and we'll hover over the little circle with uh, dotted, a dotted line around it. And uh, well, actually, it's a dotted line that makes a circle. And we hover over it and it shows, it says, load channel as selection. And we're going to click that. And then we're going to go back to the layers palette. Now, if, if you look at your document, once you've selected the, that, that little dotted circle, you'll notice that you'll see the marching ants indicating that all of the whites are selected now. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete those whites. So we go to Edit and down to Clear. Check that out. All the whites are gone. Now we have just the black line art on a transparent layer. This, be, this is very important when we get into doing color holds later on. This is at least how I achieve color holds. But we're not done yet. Now we want to lock the transparent pixels on this layer. And we're going to fill this in with black. Why fill this in with black? Well, just because, just to be on the safe side, this is a little precautionary measure that I do to make sure that no uh, stray white pixels are left over after I've deleted all my whites on the line art layer. So now, and it, it, it tends to just give like an extra little 10% robustness to the line art when it's done. And you'll notice because it's locking the transparent pixels, when I fill it with black, it only fills where there's line art. It doesn't fill any of the transparent areas, hence, locking transparent pixels. Next, we're going to hide the line art layer for a little bit, and we're going to work on the flats layer. We're going to increase the contrast between black and white just a little bit more on our flats layer, just to be on the safe side, because we've been working in grayscale so, uh, so far, 
And that means that there's going to be a little bit of aliasing around the pixels around the black line. So for that, I go to Image Adjustments Threshold. And this dialog box appears. And you can see you can move the, just, just one slider this time. You can move it back and forth to increase and decrease the amount of black in the image. And uh, you just want to move it around till it looks right to you. It's an eyeballing thing, but usually I use the, the default setting of 128 somewhere in the neighborhood. Once that's done, we're ready to convert to a color mode, whether you use RGB or CMYK, depending on the project or the publisher that you're working with. Most of the time I work in RGB. Oh no, this message pops up. What am I going to do? Uh, I just, just click don't merge. It's no big deal. I don't know why Photoshop gives you this, this error message or this warning message, but it does. So we want to keep our layers for now. And here's where we get to the, those really cool B-Pelt plugins that Mark and I have talked about in the Art and Story podcast many times before. Uh, it, the links to the plugin will be in the show notes for this podcast. So check on artandstorypodcast.com uh, for those. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, you go down to Filter, B-Pelt, and multi-fill. And this is where it gets exciting. Depending on your processor speed, after a few seconds, you will see your image filled with a kaleidoscope of color. Any place where there has been uh, a completed shape, it will be filled in with a solid color. As you can see here, we have some open shapes. The lines are not complete, and therefore, multi-fill compl just fills the entire area with the same color. So watch out for that when you're doing uh, the multi-fill plugin. Now for the next step, to complete our pre-flats, we're going to go to Filter, B-Pelt, and Flatten. And this is going to remove the line art altogether. As you can see, what the Flatten filter has done, it, it has uh, changed the line art to the surrounding colors. So now you have a flatted image. It's not done yet. There's going to be some cleanup involved after this. But it does take a lot of time out of pre-flatting a page. Now we're going to bring out the Magic Wand tool. And you want your tolerance set for somewhere between 10 and 30. I usually use 10. Uh, contiguous is checked. And anti-aliasing is off because we want to deal with absolute pixel values. We don't want any uh, aliasing, uh, meaning like uh, mid-range colors between two shapes to be selected. We want this to be as crisp a selection as possible. And using the magic wand, I just start shift-clicking around the shapes that I want to be the same color. And then I give them a fill of the same color. If you want to get really fancy with your selections and editing these, these pre-flats, you can use quick mask mode. And what I'll do is I'll select some areas to get started, and then I'll go to select, edit in quick mask mode, or just hit the Q key. And once you're in quick mask mode, any area that is not selected becomes red, and area, any area that is selected becomes transparent. And the neat thing about this is, is that you can use your paintbrush, and you can edit selections just by using uh, either black or white. If you select black, it'll paint out a selection. If you select white, you can add to a selection. So it's a pretty neat way to fine tune your selections. And you can zoom in and you can clean up any little tiny bits and pieces of areas that didn't get selected with your paintbrush or the pencil tool. To exit Quick Mask, just hit the Q key again, and you're back in normal editing mode, and then you can select your colors and fill in the selection that you've made. So now we're looking at a rough approximation of what my flats look like. I try to create uh, a flats layer that has all of the base colors that I'm going to use for editing the image. So in the case of this main character here, he has a brown coat, so I'm going to use the base color of brown uh, upon which I will throw highlights and shadows. And once my flats layer is finished, I'm just going to duplicate that and call it colors. And that's where I'm going to do all the editing, leaving the flats layer alone. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, now that I've got my color layer made, I just use my magic wand tool, select the area that I want to edit, and let's go into quick mask mode, hitting the Q key. And I'm going to use my uh, lasso tool to trace out some areas that I want to be shadows. And then I'm going to select Inverse, and I'm going to Fill. 
whoops, this is something that happens in, in quick mask mode if you're not careful. Make sure that you have your foreground uh, layer, foreground color selected as black if you want to fill in areas. If you select white as your foreground color, it's going to select all the areas outside of the selection. No big deal, quick undo, and I could change my foreground color to black, and now I fill in the proper areas, and when I leave quick mask mode, now the areas that I want are selected and I can fill it in with my shadow color. And if I want to do further edits to this guy's head, instead of selecting on the colors layer, now I can go back to my flats layer. And now I can go back to my color layer and using the quick mask mode, I can create edits that will affect all previous edits on the color layer. Saving your flats layer means that you don't have to go back and trace around your shapes over and over and over again. It's as simple as clicking your magic wand. So why did we knock out the whites at the beginning of this exercise? Why did we make the whites transparent? Well, because now, now that our black line art is preserved on a transparent layer and the transparent pixels are locked, we can do what are called color holds, where you can actually change the color of the line art by simply brushing over top of them with the paintbrush tool. Just go to your line art layer, make sure that transparent pixels are locked, and brush away, and you can create some pretty cool effects. A few more layers, a few more special effects, and this is what my final colored artwork looks like. A quick look at the layer palette shows how many layers I typically use. Uh, I'll create different selections based on the flats layer, and if I wanted to, like for instance, on the sky here, I created just a gradient effect that I put on a separate layer and masked out everything uh, just by selecting the sky flats behind the characters on the flats layer, then creating the new layer, creating the gradient, and hitting the masking, uh, the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layer's palette. So you can do a lot of really cool stuff beyond this. I'll, I'll cover these in future tutorials, but just I wanted to give you guys a look at what the layer's palette looks like when I'm done. Thanks for watching, and I've been Jersey Drozd of comicsaregreat.com and Jersey on the Twitters. Until next time, okay, bye. <laughs>